Welcome to the Kernan series. Today let us discuss about cardiovascular changes in pregnancy. As you all know, the term uterus, which is so huge, will push the diaphragm up. So what will happen to the heart? Firstly, coming to the anatomical changes. What happens when the diaphragm is pushed up? The heart also will be pushed one space up and little laterally. That is, the apex beat will be felt at 4th intercostal space and 2.5 cm lateral to the mid-clavicular line. Okay, this is the anatomical change that will happen. Coming to the inside, the physiological change that will happen. Firstly, coming to the heart rate, there is increase in heart rate. That is almost by 15 beats per minute, the heart rate will increase due to excessive blood volume. As we already dealt in hemodynamic changes, the blood volume is raised. So the heart rate will raise by 15 beats per minute. Next, coming to the cardiac output. What happens to the output? What is cardiac output? Cardiac output is nothing but the heart rate multiplied by the stroke volume. Since the stroke volume is also raised, stroke volume is nothing but in one time the heart beats, how much of blood is pumped out, okay? That is stroke volume and that is multiplied by how many times the heart is beating in a minute. So, the cardiac output is for one minute, the stroke volume is for one pump. So now, as you know, cardiac output is heart rate multiplied by the stroke volume. So heart rate is also raised, stroke volume is also raised. So automatically the cardiac output also will raise. So now you know the cardiac output is raised. Let's see when it will start raising. It starts raising by 5 weeks period of gestation and it will keep on raising till 30 to 34 weeks period of gestation. After that, it will remain same till term and during labor, again the cardiac output will raise almost by 50% due to the increased uterine contractions. Again, during the immediate postpartum period, it will raise by 70% to the pre-labor value. Okay, the, during labor it will raise by 50% and immediately after delivery it will raise by 70% more. That is the increased cardiac output because uterus is contracting so much all the blood from the uterus will be pooled into the vascular cavity. The input to the heart is so much that the cardiac output will raise by 70% immediately after delivery. So now you know the cardiac output is raised but when will it come back to normal? Immediately after delivery it was raised by 70% and in 1 hour of time it will come back to its pre-labor value and in 4 weeks of time it will come back to its pre-pregnant value. Next coming to blood pressure. Blood pressure is nothing but cardiac output multiplied by systemic vascular resistance. Now that you know cardiac output is raised, what happens to the systemic vascular resistance? It is reduced, the vascular resistance is reduced because the smooth muscle relaxation is more because of your progesterone, prostaglandins, nitric oxide, so many other things, the relaxation is more. Hence, the systemic vascular resistance reduces. Though your cardiac output is raised, the blood pressure, especially the diastolic blood pressure, falls by 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury in pregnancy. The blood pressure overall reduces because of reduced systemic vascular resistance. So now you know about the anatomical and the physiological changes in the cardiovascular system. Let us apply clinically. This is what is asked in your MCQs. What happens in supine or postural hypotension? That is when a patient lies down straight on the back or in a supine position. The term gravid uterus, which is huge, will compress on the inferior vena cava and that will reduce the backflow to the uterus and the cardiac output will have an effect. So what happens in 90% of the cases, the anastomosis will open up, that is paravertebral and the azygous vein, which is the important market. This is your MCQ question, the paravertebral and the azygous vein, anastomosis will open up and the blood flow will go to the heart. This happens in 90% of the cases. But in 10%, if this anastomosis doesn't open, then there will be supine hypotension. That is why for no patient you should advise to lie down straight on their back. You should always tell them to lie down in one lateral side, be it left or right, preferably on the left lateral side. Next, coming to the clinical examination. When you hear the maternal heart sounds, you can hear some murmurs, but you should not confuse with the pathological conditions. So you should know what are the physiological murmurs. That is like a systemic murmur you can hear, especially at the pulmonary area due to 
decreased viscosity of the blood and increased blood flow and also you can hear mammary murmurs at the tricuspid area due to increased intercostal vessel blood flow and also you can hear loud s3 this is due to rapid filling of the heart during the diastolic period because the output is so much the input also will be so much so the rapid filling of the diastolic heart causes the loud s3 sometimes rarely you can hear an s4 also these are the physiological murmurs that you can hear which you should not confuse with a pathological condition lastly before concluding the cardiovascular changes do you know the non pregnant uterus receives 50 ml blood flow per minute whereas in pregnancy at term the uterus almost receives 750 ml of blood flow per minute that is 2% of blood flow was there initially now it almost raises to 15% of the cardiac output that is the amount of demand that the uterus is having thank you for watching this session i hope you liked it and if you still have any queries you can refer to our book that is dc data textbook of obstetrics thank you